So, um, so when I met Miho, um, I thought, oh, separated at birth, how great, <laughs> right? The, the data center is do, has been doing this work for 35 years, and th there are three or four things that I just love that you all do that, uh, that I haven't really seen done well elsewhere. One is that you take up social justice policy issues and tell a very different story than the dominant story being told whether it's about juvenile justice or domestic workers or public transit. The second is that you lift up from community concerns a set of issues that should be policy issues that aren't, right? Um, a third is that you document um, oppression and possibility. One of the things that I think happens a lot with progressive research is we confuse evidence of damage as evidence of oppression, and the only way to say that things have been unjust is to say people are broken, and that you seem to refuse to do that. Mm. That you document all the ways in which people are strong, resilient, and fighting back despite the injustices that, that they endure, and that you have some kick-ass ways of disseminating mm. research, right? That you've got some visuals and some graphics and some online stuff, and because you're so deeply embedded with community and organizing, that it's, it's a kind of seamless project, so that you've you figured out how research is just another tool in the struggle for social justice. It's not the answer, it's not the only tool. You're, you're not, uh, you don't presume injustice is a cognitive problem. I work with people who think injustice, like if only people knew those folks didn't like to be treated unfairly, right? So we'll give this some data and explain that they don't like to be treated unfairly. Like you get it, it's not a cognitive problem, but it's one more tool with outrage, with politics, with organizing, with mobilization, there's research for justice. So thank you so much for the amazing work you do. Mm.